an act to provide for relief in the existing national emergency in banking and for other purposes. This means that any actions, orders, or proclamations may not hear this. Any actions, orders, or proclamations made by the president hereafter are hereby approved and confirmed by his own authority and no supervision needed. Wow. That's a powerful guy. So, 1933, gold is now illegal to possess or stockpile. Executive Order 6102, you can go find it online. This is what FDR did so that gold would be made illegal and impose heavy fines up to 10000 in prison terms for violators. Isn't that interesting? So, you're going to go to prison own gold. If you had, I think, five ounces of gold, you were punishable for up to 10 years in prison and up to 10,000 times. That is amazing. So again, in 1933, present and future private properties are hypothecated to pledge as a security or collateral for debt. We just said this, but the Federal Reserve, meaning the Federal United States government, hypothecated all of the present and future properties, assets, and labor. Labor. How do they how do they hypothecate me? My labor? Well it's called a marriage application, a birth certificate, and both of those happen to be on bonded note paper. The only thing a government has, if it doesn't steal the land from the people, as an asset is the people. That's it. So if a government isn't stealing your land and stealing your 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 wealth and your gold like they've already done up uh, into 1933, um, what do they have left? You. You are an asset. You literally are your birth certificate. Literally, your future work efforts are traded with a QCIP number on your birth certificate. Literally, that money goes into an account at the United States Treasury called the Mother Bond. So they raise money by other countries. I don't know. I don't know the exact where it's all coming from. But trillions and trillions of dollars have gone into this Mother Bond for their disposal, for this government's disposal. So how are you feeling now? You feeling like your government has done justice by you? I don't. As you start finding this out, you get sick to your stomach. Let's really get you sick to your stomach now. Because you can go on YouTube right now and you can watch every major prime minister and president of the United States for the last 30 years talk about us, the United States, becoming a part of a new world order. What? Did you ever hear of that? Well, it's pretty simple. Go on to YouTube and type George Bush New World Order. Type Clinton New World Order. Type uh, Prime Minister New World Order. And watch these presidents and prime ministers and leaders all around the world saying, it's time. We need a new world order. Well, I'm going to tell you a little secret. You've been a part of the new world order since 1944 if you're a United States citizen. Here's why. 1944, Washington, D.C. deeded to the IMF. The Bretton Woods Agreement deeded Washington, D.C. to the International Monetary Fund. The IMF is made up of wealthy people that know, that own most of the banking industries in the world. It is an organized group of bankers that have taken control of most governments so the bankers can run the world. Congress. The IRS and the president work for the IMF. The IRS is not a U.S. government agency. It's a corporation. It's an agency of the IMF. Here's a case to look up, diversified metal products versus IRS. Here's the case number, CV-93-405E-EJE, USDC, U.S. District Court, DI. Public Law 94 dash five six four also Senate report ninety four dash one one four eight page five thousand and nine hundred and sixty seven also reorganization
Consolidation Plan Number 26, Public Law 102-391. So here we are in 2011. Lots of wars, thousands and thousands of executive orders done by government who are very sinister, and they have usurped your rights as a free people through very malicious methods. They've changed the type of the entity, which is called the Lowercase United States of America, from the Declaration of Independence Trust, which is a trust indenture, it's a corporation, to a corporation formed in Delaware February 21st, 1868, and called it the United States. It sounds kind of sneaky. The de facto corporate government known as the United States is a foreign corporation with respect to the state. <coughs> Excuse me. I've said this analogy many times, and I wish you to grasp this. Remember, in California, we, we hang a flag. It's called the Republic of California flag. And that's where, if you look around, and you walk around, and you see that flag, it's because we are in the Republic. When you walk into a federal building or a state building, you'll see their seal, and it shows the state of California. You go back outside the building, and it shows the Republic flag. Go back inside the building and it shows the state of California. Where am I? What am I in? That's jurisdiction. That's what, that's what they're telling you. When you walk into a courtroom, and this is one of those things, it's been on my heart. I was in church last weekend, and up on the stage of my 501c3 church, who I love the pastor, he's got an American flag with gold fringe around it. Huh. Does anybody even know what that American flag means and who it's representing? Well, if we go back and we remind ourselves it's a corporation, it's their flag, it's in the District of Columbia, and they made their streets out to be a satanic symbol with a beast with the number 666 across its forehead. So the flag for the U.S. corporation with the gold fringe around it Hangs where? Hangs in our churches. Hangs in our courtrooms. And it's disgusting. We need to educate ourselves. So, I got some really fun stuff for you. Well, first of all, how is it that it took me 38 years of my life to even learn this? It's because there is a plan. It's called the Communist Manifesto. You need to look into it. All ten stages of the Communist Manifesto are in full effect here in this country. Through education or lack thereof. Many of the steps that we need to become a communist nation, socialized agenda, socialized nation, are in full effect. They are calling us enemy combatants, and now Homeland Security has specifically stated if you are a veteran of a foreign war or a conservative Christian, you are a domestic terrorist. Okay. Um, we now have Homeland Security treating us like terrorists. They already call us an enemy combatant. That's why when you walk into the courtroom through the bars, and I want you to remember those swinging bars when you walk into a courtroom, the, one of the definitions for those swinging bars is jurisdiction. Go look at the law, the flag, look up in the dictionary, bar, look up flag, and the law of. The law of the flag is the jurisdiction where the flag hands. It's the vessel. When you walk into the jurisdiction of that courtroom and it's hanging, a United States corporate gold fringe flag, you are their enemy combatant and you will be treated as such. You have no rights in their land. Get it? So when you say, I am that person, that 14th Amendment citizen, you are an enemy combatant with no rights in their land because that courtroom is their land, it's their jurisdiction. So I got some fun stuff. Um, I want you to ask yourself this stuff. And I want you to start studying this stuff. And ask yourself how many things are going to be revealed to you. 
and back it up and keep a database and show yourself, prove yourself as somebody with wisdom. Because it took me 38 years before I started doing that, and I don't want to be like that. What is happening right around us, and we don't know, stuff that is in the symbolism of our money, our seals, and the murals, the disgusting murals in state and federal buildings and in major airports around our country. They've just changed the name of the Los Angeles Airport to the Los Angeles World Airport. It's an internationally jurisdiction-based airport. They've been giving our land away to um, foreigners, and it's called Federal Trade Zones. They've been doing that since 1933 to pay some of the debts. In these Federal Trade Zones, over 275 of them, they have their own laws. They have their own rules. We do, we do not govern them. They have Chinese cities that are being built here on our land right now. Okay. I didn't know that until recently. What we need to know and what we need to understand is very critical for the salvation of yourself, your children, and your children's children. Why is it, ask yourself this one question, why is every president related second, third, fourth, fifth cousins. Why is it all but one of the presidents is related to the 1215 king, the one that signed the Magna Carta, King John? If you don't know what the Magna Carta is, please investigate it. Because every one of your presidents is a direct line from that king. So the chances of that are billions or trillions to one. The point is, it seems... The only people that seem to make it, you know, an understanding for themselves are in a very high position. They all are relating it to a bloodline to this king. So does that mean George was bad? George Washington, George Bush, Obama, all these all these presidents put into power? I got another one for you to think about, Obama had Secret Service assigned to him eight months before he became the president. The guy had a $60, $650 million war chest. Do you think he couldn't hire the, the uh, an entire Navy SEAL team to defend him? He didn't need Secret Service. What was the motive or plan behind that? It's because they knew he was the next president. And he also has a direct bloodline to 1215 King John, the guy that signed the Magna Carta, the king that gave all the possessions of all the world to the Holy Roman Church, the Pope. So, I read a book recently on symbolism, and you'd be amazed at the symbolism on the money for the U.S. currency. You'd be amazed at some of the pictures of our founding fathers and the symbolism that is in it. And you might think different about your presidents. We have a sick world now. Our fish, our livestock, our people are dying. The Gulf of Mexico is dead. Worldwide earthquakes and disasters are nearly every month. Is it by chance or is something, something out there that we don't know? Ladies and gentlemen, wake up, you sleeping fools. Stop waiting for somebody else to do something in Republic. You need to get out there with your business cards, your flyers, your word. Tell people about the Republic because there is some good news to this conversation. Because those documents that we do hold high, whether they were a setup by founding fathers that weren't really Christians, doesn't matter. Because we re-inhabited and we can make those documents as our intent. And I'm going to yield the floor to my very good friend Ken Cousins to discuss the good news about what we have done here in Republic. Ken, you have the floor. Hey, Kelby. How are you tonight? Obviously, you're, uh, you're very focused. That was a tremendous, tremendous 